Hello and welcome back. In the last lesson, we set up our set first name function. We're going to continue right where we left off by setting up the, the set last name function. This is going to be very similar to what we've just done. So we're just going to get this done real quick and hopefully some of the, the repetition here will help sync in some of the things that we're doing. So we're going to set up that try catch block. We're going to catch any error that does come through. And if there is, we're going to throw that new error. Okay, simple stuff. And now in the try block, we're going to do our sanitization. So we're going to check if last name is not null. So if there is something in that last name, we're going to sanitize. We're going to say last name dot trim. And then we will do our replace function with that same regular expression. And that's just going to sanitize our last name for us. Then we are going to do a validation. So we're going to set up that message variable. And then we're going to call validate dot single, we're going to pass in the last name as the value. And then in this case, it's going to be constraints dot name, because these are both names and we're going to do our conditional check. If there is a message, something went wrong, and we're just going to return that message. Otherwise, if there is no message, then we know that this is a valid um, name. And then we'll say this.name.last is equal to last name. And then we will return out of this function because everything went well. So that's it real quick. We've got our set last name function all set up. And so we can move on to the next one. As you can see, we are just going through this constructor that we've set up. These two values are being supplied by the constructor. Um, these values are here. They are designed to take in and map the, the value that's coming in from the API onto this class. So for, for now it's null. But uh, before we set it, we want to do these checks. So let's move on to the email. We will create a, a similar function here. We're going to call set email. And then this will take in a email address. And in the function here, we are going to do a very similar thing. We're going to set up our try catch block. All right, we're going to throw our new error, or we're going to throw any error that we do get. We're not going to do any sanitization here. What we do want to do is a validation. We want to check if this is a valid email address. If it's not valid, we just want to throw back an error. So we're going to set up a an additional constraint in our library over here. So I'm going to make space to add a new function. I'm going to reference this underscore. We're going to add on an email function here. And this will just be function that returns the constraints. And as I'm typing this, you will see I've made a mistake. And I want to correct that really quickly. You'll see in our name function, we are actually not returning the restraint. So I just want to add return constraints to that function. And so that's a mistake on my part. Good thing that I caught it now. In the email function here, we're going to set up a same type of thing, we're going to say constraints, and then we'll set up this object. And then over here, the presence of this, we want to say, allow empty, and that's going to be set to false. And then the type is going to be of type string. And then this validate package allows us to set up a email key. And then if we say true here, it's going to check the normal things like is there an at sign, is there a domain a dot, all of that. So that's looking good. Then what we can do is return our constraints and we can head on over back to our user file. And now we can set up our validation. We're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to say uh, let message equals validate, and then we'll reference the single function. And the value will be the email that's coming through when we call this function. And then we will just reference, and now we have access to uh, this email function that we've just passed through. Then we can do our conditional check. We'll say if message, and then we will return message else. If there is no message, we know it's a valid email address, then we can say this dot email equals email. And then we can return from this function and all is looking good. All right, so at this stage, we've been writing a lot of code. Maybe you've been a little bit confused. So what I wanna do before we move on to the last function of setting the password, because there's gonna be some additional work we uh, have to do to set that up properly. Uh, but why don't we go back to our router 
And let's just have a look at what we're doing here. If you remember, we've imported our user class. I've instantiated that new class. And now we can start doing things like user.set email, for example. And if I put in a valid email address in there, we can take a look uh, for the sake of continuity. Here, let's just say set first name. I will say Justin and then we'll say set last name and we'll just put test in there. All right. And let's just fire up our server with an NPM start. Uh, everything's looking good. We will head on over to our, our postman. Uh, I'm just going to run the send oh, and I haven't done a console log or anything. So let's just add the user onto the end of this object. Uh, let's hit our send here. And then you'll see we'll have a, an email address that's assigned onto the user as well as the first name and last name has been set. So that's kind of what we're going for in our router at a later stage. We'll do uh, some more checks here to see if the, the input's valid and that kind of thing. But for now, I think we, we in a good place. We, we making good headway. We've set up that set first name, set last name, set email. Uh, the last thing we need to do is set up this password hash. So let's take a short break here. We'll pick up this work in the next lesson. So cheers for now.